man, as the most intelligent creature on the planet, has developed enormous potential for intelligence. He constantly researches, sets almost impossible goals, seeks answers to questions that are sometimes very abstract. This has led man to evolve to the point where he is beginning to achieve great results in his quest for the creation of the universe. Are we ready to understand the great mystery of Genesis? Is it even possible to discover this great secret? These questions give us the strength to continue to explore, to advance in technology, to advance in space exploration. But what if the unimaginable scenario happens? Can we withstand the moment of the first contact with aliens? Will we react properly? What is the right reaction? A beautiful, vast expanse in which our thought is not yet at the level to offer us an explanation of some things in the universe. The universe is so large that the very thought of understanding it is a huge challenge. Are we alone in this vast expanse? More alarming is the possibility that alien civilizations are remaining out of contact because they know something, that sending out signals is catastrophically risky. Our history on Earth has given us many examples of what can happen when civilizations with unequal technology meet, generally, the technologically more advanced has destroyed or enslaved the other. Our definition of habitable environments continues to expand. Off the Earth we've only begun to look. NASA has sent five rovers and four landers to the surface of Mars. Additionally, orbiters have been outfitted with some amazing cameras to take pictures of the whole surface of the Red Planet. But we've only explored a tiny fraction of Mars. And that's only one of the promising bodies to look for life in our solar system. There are icy moons in the outer solar system like Saturn's moon Enceladus and Jupiter's moon Europa that look like they may have subsurface oceans that could be habitable. And that's just what's in our solar system. The subsurface oceans are certainly the key driver for exploration of these worlds. Europa is a fascinating place with an ocean that might be only tens of kilometers below the surface and may communicate actively with the surface through eruptions, through icy convection, blobs of warm ice moving up to the surface through cracking, breaking of the ice. So there could be signs on the surface of what's going on. We can't yet say for sure whether or not aliens exist. To quote Carl Sagan, the universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, it seems like an awful waste of space. Scientists are encouraging the scientific community to establish a new framework that provides context for findings related to the search for life. Are we alone in the universe? All of science is a process of asking questions, coming up with hypotheses, developing new methods to look for clues, and ruling out all alternative explanations. Any individual detection may not be completely explained by a biological process, and must be confirmed through follow-up measurements and independent investigations. Just to the east of M27, the Apple Core Nebula, there's a star that can be seen in binoculars, and this star hosts a giant planet. The star is slightly smaller and cooler than our Sun. In 2005, astronomers found its Jupiter-sized planet, named HD 189733b. Incredibly, the planet orbits just 3 million miles from the star, 12 times closer than Mercury orbits our Sun. It's so close that the planet whips around its star in a little over two days. But this planet pays a steep price for skirting its sun. Sometimes the star erupts with powerful flares, flares that heat the planet's upper atmosphere so much that the gases simply escape. Since the planet passes in front of its star as we see it from Earth, astronomers were able to use the Hubble Space Telescope to establish that the atmosphere was evaporating. But when they looked again in 2010, there was no trace of an escaping atmosphere. Yet when astronomers looked once more in 2011, they saw dramatic evidence that the atmosphere was eroding. Hydrogen gas was rushing away from the planet at speeds over 300,000 miles an hour. What had changed? The same astronomers were also watching the star with NASA's SWIFT satellite. Just eight hours before Hubble was scheduled to look for the planet's atmosphere, SWIFT saw the star erupt in a powerful X-ray flare. Similar flares happen frequently on the Sun, but because the planet is so big and so close to its star, 
This X-ray blast had an outsized effect, heating the planet's atmosphere and sweeping away 1,000 tons of gas each second. The escaping gas gave the planet a comet-like tail. While HD 189733b has plenty of gas to spare, atmospheric erosion is an important process, one able to whittle down any gas giant planet that hugs its star too close. Sometimes, there are problems with the instruments themselves. Other times, experiments don't turn up anything at all, but still deliver valuable information about what doesn't work or where not to look. Astrobiology is no different. The field pursues some of the most profound questions that anyone could ask, regarding our origins and place in the universe. As scientists learn more and more about what kinds of signals are associated with life in diverse environments on Earth, they can create and improve upon technologies needed to find similar signs elsewhere. Exoplanets, planets outside our solar system, are believed to outnumber the 300 billion stars in the Milky Way. But small, rocky planets are harder to study from afar than gas giants. Since the early 1990s, astronomers have known that extrasolar planets, or exoplanets, orbit stars light years beyond our own solar system. Because most exoplanets are too far away to be directly imaged, characteristics such as size, composition, and atmospheric makeup must be determined through a variety of indirect methods. For instance, when an exoplanet passes in front of its star, or transits, it blocks a fraction of the star's light and causes a dip in brightness. Large planets block more light, so the size of the dip can be used to determine the size of the planet. By observing an exoplanet's gravitational pull on its star, astronomers can also determine the planet's mass and thus calculate its density to see if it is composed of rock, like Earth, or gas, like Saturn. But to fully understand an exoplanet, astronomers must study its atmosphere, and the information that they need is encoded during a transit. As the planet crosses its star, its atmosphere absorbs certain wavelengths of light, or colors, while allowing other wavelengths to pass through. Because each molecule absorbs distinct wavelengths, astronomers spread the star's light into its spectrum of colors to see which wavelengths have been absorbed. The dark absorption bands act as molecular fingerprints, revealing the atmosphere's chemical makeup. Knowing the depth and density of the atmosphere is also important. To figure this out, astronomers observe the transit at many different wavelengths. At wavelengths where more absorption occurs, the planet will appear larger, with the change in size indicating how deeply the atmosphere extends and its density at different altitudes. Measuring the depth of absorption at each wavelength gives astronomers the planet's transit depth curve, which allows them to model the composition, height, and density of the atmosphere, providing a detailed picture of the planet. Recent studies suggest that exoplanets and their atmospheres come in a wide variety. At one extreme are hot Jupiters like WASP-19b, a boiling gas giant that orbits its star far closer than Mercury orbits our Sun. Visitors who could survive the heat might complain about the air quality. Planet WASP-19b's jagged transit depth curve suggests a deep atmosphere of poisonous hydrocarbons, with methane and hydrogen cyanide far more abundant than water. By contrast, Planet Gliese 1214b is a comparatively inviting water world. Its nearly flat transit depth curve hints at a shallow atmosphere of pure steam enveloping an ocean thousands of kilometers deep with an interior of hot ice, water solidified by extreme pressure rather than cold. As detection methods improve, astronomers will search the atmospheres of Earth-sized planets for signs of life such as water vapor, oxygen, and methane taking us one step closer to finding a world like our own, all thanks to some flickering starlight. Future missions and technologies would be necessary to analyze the atmospheres of Earth-sized planets with Earth-like temperatures receiving adequate amounts of starlight for life as we know it. The James Webb Space Telescope is the next big advance in this area but it will likely take an even more sensitive telescope to detect the combination of molecules that would indicate life. Detecting oxygen in the atmosphere of an exoplanet, a planet outside our solar system, would be a significant step in the process of searching for life. We associate oxygen with life because it is made by plants and we breathe it, but there are also geological processes that generate oxygen, so it is not proof by itself of life. 
Scientists who study exoplanets are eager to find both oxygen and methane, a combination of gases in Earth's atmosphere indicative of life. Upcoming missions such as Europa Clipper, an orbiter headed for Jupiter's icy moon Europa will provide vital information about the environments in which some form of life may one day be found. Scientists are all but certain that Europa has an ocean underneath its icy surface, but they do not know how thick this ice might be.